So this is a follow-up to my last video where I was talking about a 4 megabyte RAM expansion card and I had a video with this graphic in there. A lot of good discussion happening on the YouTube video comments and what I was hoping was that I could physically access this 4 meg beyond the 1 meg mark and it sounds like I can do that but it's going to be maybe a bit difficult to do that. And, you know, initial commentary uh, or feedback that I got was uh, from DOS. DOS can't access above that one meg, or there's uh, certain things that have to be done to make that happen, like this extended memory specification. Uh, maybe there's a driver. And I did research it a bit, and FreeDOS does have an XMS driver that it seems like I could load and as far as I understand it so far, and I'm still learning about this, is that that driver often would call BIOS Interrupt 15. And I could choose to implement BIOS Interrupt 15. And in BIOS Interrupt 15, there's two functions. There's a function 87, which is to move memory to or from extended memory. And then there's also a function 88, which is to determine the, the memory size. So that kind of helped fill in a gap that I had of, you know, how would DOS know how much extended memory uh, my system would have. Well, it's this interrupt that would tell it that. But then I would need something probably in a DOS, DOS app, along with this XMS driver to say that it wants to use memory in that space is my assumption. So there'd have to be some specific coding in whichever app uh, or something that FreeDOS would have to do to ultimately get through the XMS driver to this interrupt and a whole bunch of tricky things about that interrupt. Uh, still from that interrupt in my BIOS, I could get to the memory on this card if it was above one meg, but I would have to convert or flip from real mode into protected mode, do the transfer of memory from, for example, somewhere on this card into uh, the one meg space. And then I'd have to get the CPU put back into real mode from protected mode. And for the 286, it seems like that can only happen if you reset the processor. And so I've read up and there's definitely people that have done some interesting hacks to reset the processor and bring it back up and try to pick up with where it left off, etc. The more I read into that, the more I don't want to go down that path. That just seems like a lot of work. But what I have uh, looked at doing, and, and this was... A couple of the comments uh, were about maybe set it, set it up so I could page this and access it through you know some address space within the one meg maybe like I did with my video card I did a 64k window to get to two meg of video RAM I could do the same thing here if I had four meg populated I could just access it 64k at a time. And that probably isn't all that bad. It would be nice not to have to do that, but right now that seems like the better of the options that uh, I'm seeing and hearing about so far. So that might be what I'm going to do. Uh, there's also this interesting load all that I don't know much about, and, and that uh, I have a link here on this blog post if you want to go read more about that. Uh, and that's probably something else I want to read up on when I get time. But I think what I'm going to do is try to implement a 64K window for this. And then if I get that working, maybe I'll expose it as the C1000 uh, through CFFFF. Uh, and then I could later implement, for example, these interrupts uh, like interrupt 15 function 87 and not even have to flip to protected mode, but from real mode, just simply set the appropriate uh, register on this card so that I can get to the proper 64K window of memory within this four meg, copy it out or just simply make it available as the active 64K and maybe even get this driver loaded for XMS and be able to access the memory on this card through interrupt 15. So that's something I'm going to do or try to learn more about later. But for now, at least, maybe what I'll do is just get this uh, page to access or this uh, 64K window running. And here's the address space as it sits on my computer currently. So RAM is the first 640K. Then I have a 64K window to get to my video card memory. 
and that is a 2 meg VRAM that I have on that card. And basically I have an I.O. register that I can set that lets me select which of the 64K segments within the 2 meg I want to get to. And then I've left this B0000 range for miscellaneous I.O. or other little things that I need to put in that space. And then my BIOS starts at C0000 up through the end of the 1 meg. What I'm going to do, I think, is going to just shrink that down. So I think I'm going to cut my BIOS down to 192K and then insert a 64K window for accessing this memory card. So the memory card will be accessible at C0000 and then ROM will start at D0000, which is fine. I have way more space than I need for ROM and I'm not using it anyways. So I probably would be fine with maybe even 64K or 128K of ROM. So 192 is still plenty. And then this would give me the 64K window to get to, you know, up to four meg if I actually populate the card with that much. And that might be handy so that I could maybe copy things from video RAM over to this memory or vice versa, or do other things uh, 64K at a time. So that's kind of what I'm thinking, and uh, I still need to think through that more, and I'm sure there'll be further discussion about pros, cons, uh, and uh, what, I'm, what I'm not thinking of, which is, which is great. I did update or made a, I cloned my initial project, and, and then I came in here and made a version that it probably looks simpler. That's because I've actually abstracted some of the complexity into a PSOC. And if you've been following my video series, you know I already have, I think, three PSOCs on the system. I have one on my main 286 system board that's doing just my address decode for the, the core system. And then my VGA card is using a pair of PSOCs, one to generate the timing and then another to do the address decode and such uh, to really sw switch between the two frames that I have on that video card for memory. But in this case, it's really just the same eight memory chips you know each of these is half a meg so that gives me my total of four meg i still have my 245 buffers here uh, the isa edge for the adding card and then this psoc and i've come into this psoc and said okay if i feed it these signals let me see if i can get this on the screen okay uh, if i can feed it certain signals like uh, all my address 0 through 7, I'll need that because I'm going to actually have essentially a register on the PSOC. So I can write to that register and I'll need to be able to write you know, the value of the register because I'm going to need, oh, if my math off the top of my head is right, I, I need 64 segments of 64K each. And maybe I could just validate that real quick. Uh, let's see if I come in here and I do uh, 64 times... Uh, 1024 and then I do that times 64 yeah that's my 4 meg so I got 64 segments of 64k so I'll have to have based on that then I would need six bits to store that or represent that and if I come back to this uh, and I just simply put in maybe the decimal number 64 that's how many I have to represent so zero through and then four bits, five bits, six bits is what I would need. So six bits, I would need a six bit register to be able to help me with this. The upper address lines I'll have to give it are these uh, A18, 19, 17, 16. I have them spread out a little bit here. It ends up that some of these pins are used for something else, uh, but A19, 17, 16, and then the 18 over here, I'm gonna need that uh, to help me basically decode what address am I writing this to? And again, I'm going to target this C0000 address. And later I'll get into the logic on that and you can help me spot check it if, if there's anything crazy with it. I'm also going to need to bring in some data lines. There's the six, I only, I only care about these six bits of the data bus uh, so I can read in and set that register. I don't really need data lines six or seven, I don't believe. And I technically, I don't think I'm even using the clock in the logic I've set up, but I do need these, uh, the write and read signals here, the IO write. I have an output that's gonna tell me whether or not I should enable those buffers to allow in or out of the card as far as the data. 
I'm also going to send out these four lines uh, basically that are going to uh, control address lines 16, 17, 18, 19 of the memory. And so I just have this as, uh, I'm calling them SA, but SA 16 through 19 to help me do that. And then I have all these enable lines. So for each pair of RAM chips that I've got, I need the output enable, the write enable. Uh, that along with it, remember the BHE and A0 should give me all the signals I then need for those RAM chips. So in theory, at least what I'm starting to build out, that's what I'm thinking. And I'm going to use these bits. The lower four bits will help me specify the segment within the memory. So if I pick a pair, that's a one meg set of memory. And if I can only go from 0, 0, 0, 0 to FFFF to address within that, I somehow have to get above address A15. So I'm going to say that when I set the register, that's going to let me pick the next four bits. So that'll take me from address 0 to 15 and then add on 16, 17, 18, 19. So now I can fully address this uh, 0 through address 19 is available and uh, should be good with that. So this has uh, 18, so maybe, just thinking through it here, 15, 16, 17, 18. Uh, I might have to double check that, make sure I don't have one too many bits on the segment side of things, which I might actually have going on here. No, I think I'm okay because uh, I always forget that these addresses are shifted by one, so I actually have uh, a three, for example, here, uh, if I look at that, that's actually connected to a two and then I can work my way up and I need this 19 to connect to 18. So I had to think about that for a second. So I will use all the way up to this SA 19. So address zero to address 19, and that will get me connected here uh, for all of that because the address one is actually going to go to what's marked as address zero on the chip and the address zero goes over here to this chip enable so it's, it's all shifted by a pin uh, hopefully that's making sense and for those of you that have done a lot of this in the past uh, you're probably quite familiar with how that addressing gets shifted by one so these are outputs along with this down here being an output a lot of the rest of these oh and these are outputs but all the rest of these look like they're inputs that i'll be using in my logic and i can go take a look at that logic uh, real quick here and so this is this psoc creator tool and this is the logic that i have started for that psoc and over here are just all the pins that I've set up and what signals I'm bringing in. And I just give them a, a simple little net label so that I can use that label throughout this instead of drawing lines everywhere. To me, this is more manageable uh, this way. Uh, not everybody necessarily likes this approach, though, and they like to see all the lines connected. But what I have done here is I've set up an IO address. And so I'm going to use IO address 60. And basically, I'll be able to do uh, an out from my 286 using the out command in my assembly and write to address 60. So if these bits all match the way I'm looking at, that just means that I'm in the right address space for this I.O. And I'll use that then along with the fact that uh, the I.O. write would be active, which would be a low, and that it's an even byte that I'm writing. So if I'm writing an even byte and I'm in the right address space and I'm doing IO, then that tells me that, yep, I should go ahead and read in the register. And what I'm doing for that is I just have six D flip flops here. And basically I'm reading in data line five down to zero. And I'm going to do that when this is true. So basically that's my what I'm using as a clock to bring in and latch in that information in these uh, flip-flops. Then I take it into a LUT and I basically look at D5, D4. I look at whether I'm writing or reading and whether or not I should be enabling and sending out anything. 
as far as what I would send to the memory chips. And I would want to send out these signals when I'm trying to actually address the address space where this memory will be. And so I mentioned I'm going to try doing this at C0000. So again, I have some decode logic here. And if all of that matches, if it's a 1100 for those four bits, that means I'm accessing D0000 if all my math is right so far. And that's another input into this LUT. But basically this LUT is just a lookup. So it's a lookup table and it just says, okay, um, if you're not enabled, if that's not a one, don't send out any values out of this. And you'll see that I'm inverting because it defaults everything at zero. So I am going to default, leave the default at zero. And that's on power on and I'm going to invert. So right, right when I turn the system on, all of these are pulled high, which means none of them are enabled because they're all active low signals on those chips. And if enabled is zero, which would be coming out of, you know, this here, which is just an AND gate, means I'm not in the right address space. So I'm not going to change any of my outputs. I'm going to leave everything disabled. But then when I get down here to where the signal is enabled, then I've got to look at, am I doing a read or a write? If I'm doing both, I know that's not a valid state, so I can ignore those. And then D4 and D5 will help me figure out which of the megabytes, the first, second, third, or fourth megabyte I'm in. And so like in this example, I can come into this and say, okay, uh, for this first one that I've marked, the D4, D5 are 00, zero so I'm going to consider that my first megabyte. And this flag is pulled low, which tells me that, okay, if my MRDC, which I'm pulling in, an active low so if it's a low if mrdc is low that means i'm doing a read so i'm doing a read of the first megabyte and so that i'm going to mark as this a megabyte one output and on the next one down instead of it being a read of megabyte one it's a different pattern for the d4 d5 and in this case it's the highest and then a zero so a one zero so it's not zero one, but that takes me over to megabyte three. Then I do megabyte two, megabyte one. Then I get into the writes and the exact same pattern. So out of all the combinations, there's my eight potential enables, either read or write of these eight different chips, basically. So I think that logic, I hope that logic is uh, pretty close to what I'm gonna need. And so then that'll send out my output enable or my write enable to the pair. You know, so I've got these two signals for each pair and both chips would be enabled for write or enabled for read within a pair. And then between BHE and A0, that will tell me which of the chips I'm actually going to read and write to the low byte, the high byte, or both the low and the high byte. I've not tried doing this type of stuff. I've not used a lot. I've not used uh, these uh, flip-flops like this as a basically a register, a quasi-register here in this PSOC before. Uh, so this will be a learning experience to see if this all plays out okay. Um, but essentially I'm saying that I'm going to access the memory on my card when I go to D0000. And as far as which 64, 64K segment is accessed, it will depend on what values are stored here in this you know, register essentially that I'm building. And that register will get set when you know, this certain criteria happens and for this specific IO address. So it's this IO address and I'm writing to it, go ahead and latch in this information into that basically register I'm using, use that register along with a couple additional of additional signals, this uh, MWTC and MRDC to help me determine which of the outputs should be enabled. One other thing here is that if I'm in the correct address space, I should also send out this active low for LOE and that is just simply going to enable those buffers. And if I flip back to that here real quickly, that is what's going to come into these two uh, 74 245s that's either going to let it in or out depending on how IOR is set and this IOR is coming in from the ISA bus. So if that all plays out okay that should give me this modification where I have this C0000 to access a 64k range 
I can do an IO write to the card to that IO address of what was it 60 that will choose which 64k within the 8 or within the 4 meg is actually shown in this 64k window here um, and that's pretty similar to what I'm doing for the video it's just I'm now putting a lot more into the PSOC and uh, have fewer discrete ICs to handle it and I think that's okay it'll let me experiment with the PSOC a bit more and also change uh, change up how I'm doing that decode and that access if for some reason the way I'm thinking through this just doesn't work well which very well could be the case uh, but lots of great discussion on uh, the YouTube channel so definitely if you have thoughts on this let me know uh, if you think this seems reasonable or if this just seems uh, a bit out of whack uh, and there's better ideas, uh, please let me know. And like I said earlier, if this all works out, I think I could later then use one of those memory drivers to get access to the 4 meg and access it through the 64K window. I just have to implement the proper support uh, in my uh, interrupt in my BIOS and that goes back to this interrupt 15. But that would come later. If I even want to bother with that, it might not be worth it. It could just be that I'm going to use this within my code, within my BIOS. And then I'll probably try to get to the point where from my C++ code, writing an app for DOS, I should be able to write to this register to choose the 64K uh, area of memory. And then from that, store data, uh, retrieve things, cache video content, whatever it might be. And I can flip over and just take a real quick look at what this looks like as far as the card. So this is what the card will look like at this point. Again, I can populate just two of these at a time. So I can choose one meg or yeah, one meg, two meg, three meg, four meg. I've just got these two buffers and then a PSOC. So the card is really simple and uh, that's it. So uh, I'll do that and see if uh, this will work out okay as far as what I'm trying to do. Uh, so that's what I had for now. Uh, again, any uh, additional thoughts on that would be great. I'm sure there'll be some good discussion. So uh, thanks everybody for contributing to that. Appreciate it, thanks.